Hello everyone, it's me Matt, really appreciate you stopping by on today's video. As an artillery gunner of the Canadian Armed Forces, I take the artillery pretty seriously, but I also am fascinated by other nations' doctrine and the way in which they operate within the artillery, and one thing that is very passionate to me is uh, being part of ceremonial gun drill. I've done it on two separate occasions with the Canadian Armed Forces. Uh, you're more than welcome to go check out the videos that I will put in the description box below and on screen right now. But I'm looking today at the Americans form of ceremonial gun drill and it is really impressive the way in which they coordinate and uh, you know choreograph I guess their gun drills with their uh, howitzers and it's really really interesting to see the kind of dynamic they have when they operate the guns and the you know the routine and the regime that they have it's uh, so well orchestrated and I thought you'd enjoy taking a look at some footage today of them actually taking part in these drills and as you can see this is more of a practice run uh, they're doing it uh, as the detachments working together to practice and hone their skills on the gun and ensure that when it comes to the actual day when they need to do this for real everything goes as smooth as possible now this is truly a gunner's honor uh, the guns in the Canadian Armed Forces and part of the Commonwealth are our colors which basically means that they are our battle honors we respect the guns as if they were our battle flags and it's the same across most nations around the world so we take huge pride in our gun platform and the way in which we treat them but even more so when it comes to ceremonial gun drill because they take precedence in terms of honors uh, in the parade for the Americans, they provide different types of uh, gun salutes, which uh, have a different precedence of number of rounds fired. For instance, uh, 21 gun salutes are normally reserved for the President of the United States, former Presidents and Presidents-elect, or Chiefs of States, Heads of Government, and reigning monarchs. A 19 gun salute is reserved for the Vice President of the United States, Speaker of the House Representatives, President of the Senate, Chief Justice of the United States, Cabinet Officers, Governors of the U.S. State, the Deputy Secretary of Defense, the Director of Defense, research and engineering and honestly for a 19 gun salute there's a very long list that goes on and on for a 17 gun salute it goes towards the governor general or governor of a territory the commonwealth a possession of the united states or an area under u.s administration a committee of congress assistant secretaries of defense general counsel the department of defense under secretaries of the army navy air force or any admirals or generals for a 15 gun salute is normally reserved for vice admirals or lieutenant generals. For a 13 gun salute, minister resident, rear admiral or major general. For a 11 gun salute is the council general, council or vice council when in charge of a consulate general, brigadier generals or rear admiral lower half. Seven gun salutes for consuls accredited to the US vice councils when in charge of consulate. And a five gun salute for the vice councils and consular agents. Of course, when it comes to the death of presidents, a US presidential death also involves 21 gun salutes and other military traditions. So there's quite a lot of variants of how the guns are used for ceremonial drill, but the main process of actually firing the gun is fairly similar. And the guns themselves, when they're operated, are done with extreme precision accuracy, otherwise known as fire discipline. And the same applies when firing live rounds or as these soldiers are firing in blank rounds with the US Army. The gun that is being used is very similar to the gun that I use, the C3 Howitzer, a 105mm, but this is their own variant of the US military. And making sure that everything goes smoothly is really, really important. Some of the things you'll notice is the double checks that they complete when they're doing these drills, ensuring that everything works smoothly. Interestingly enough, you're about to see a demonstration of exactly what happens when things can go wrong. And trust me, when you're doing this live, it's always the worst luck when you want, you know, a timed salute to go correct, that things don't go correct. Battery! Stand by! Fire! 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 Fire
So as you could see at the beginning of that footage, when the first round was to be fired, the first gun actually had a misfire. The round did not go off, but the show must still go on, which is why the next gun is always there available, ready to pull the lanyard or basically the string that attaches to the stri uh, trigger to the next gun, because you cannot miss the timing of this salute. It must be choreographed perfectly, which is why there is always a reserve gun or someone ready loaded before the next one goes. There can be times where the guns are fired all at the same time, depending on which nation or kind of duty that's being, I guess, taken part in. But for the most part, in this particular gun salute, the guns will be fired in succession, which means someone is always on standby in case there is a misfire. And that was a perfect example. The first gun needed to fire, they pull the lanyard, nothing happens. So they did a quick exchange of rounds. They popped the round out, put a fresh round in, checked the breech operating lever mechanism there to make sure it's all seated correctly, and they could carry on firing. But it's always the worst luck. You know, that first round that they needed to fire to initiate the, the ceremonial drill uh, did not go off, but they did everything well. Everything well, it worked. Uh, the other gun took the position and carried on firing, and then they could recover and keep moving the shells uh, through the breach and continue going through with the drill. The interesting part about doing ceremonial gun drill is actually how well it uh, gives you the goosebumps on the back of your neck. You know, firing live rounds is always so much fun, okay? You know, actually doing fire missions and, and engaging targets, it's a lot of fun. But when you're taking part in something as prestigious as ceremonial gun drill, you know you have a true meaning as to why you're doing it in respect or in honor of those who have fallen or maybe in celebration of something too you know in, in the american standard of course they do it for celebrating a new president or etc uh, the uk do it for the queen and all these all sorts of positive things as well not always the negative but it does give you a lot of pride when you're a gunner working on the guns in this kind of fashion because you you know you're in front of the public people like to see the guns firing they're pretty loud uh, nowhere near as loud as you would see with a live round um, but the blank charges that we use produce a lot of smoke and that smell, that smell of cordite, um, never leaves you. You know, you always remember that smell when you put your first ceremonial round down range. It just feels incredible. Um, and working as a team too, I think that's one of the most important parts about being a gunner and being part of a gun detachment is having that sense of belonging, that sense of, uh, you know, brotherhood or sisterhood, whatever you may wish to call it, um, in your particular detachment. And you just feel a bond. And when you're doing ceremonial gun drill, you just reinforce that bond with those people that you're working with. And you know you have a true meaning as to why you're doing it. Um, these American troops that are working on these guns, the way that they do it is a little different to the way in which we do it in the Canadian Armed Forces with their actual foot drill and the way in which they choreograph loading of the gun. It's a lot more formalized um, in the US Army. And I think it looks really smart, really sharp. Um, that's not saying that myself and the Canadian Armed Forces and the way, and we, the way on which we do things is not smart and sharp, but it's just a little bit different. Um, you can see in this particular example too uh, that they are not uh, swabbing the breach, uh, which basically means they try and, um, in, in most situations, clean the breach of any hot uh, embers that could be in there. We tend to get a little sponge uh, or a little rag, wet rag, and we, we kind of clean up the breach before the next round goes in to prevent any hot embers falling into um, the, the cartridge that we use to fire the blank rounds because what happens is uh, that potentially could pre-ignite the round before it actually goes down range. But uh, for the most part, I've never heard of that happening, but it's a precautionary. But in this particular situation, they're not doing that. They're just putting the, you know, the charge straight in there. You can see there's a lot of noise, a lot of smoke, and uh, let's go through another round here and see what it looks and sounds like. Oh, 
was a lead gun. Fuck! So once again you saw in that particular ceremonial drill fire there, they actually had another misfire. It was gun number three, which is uh, second from the left. They had a misfire and number four took over. So they're watching each other. The coordination is very important. Um, you know, you have the, uh, I guess, somewhat of the master of ceremonies or the gun coordinator or the uh, gun position officer who's coordinating those rounds to be fired when and at what time, specifically at a timing that is deliberate. Uh, but you're also having those on the gun that are watching the other gun in case things go wrong so they can initiate and take over that role, which is really, really important because, as I said, it is very strict in the way in which the rounds are fired and the timings that they put across. So, you know, it's just a bit of an eye-opening thing to see. You know, a lot of people think the artillery and what we do is, you know, of, of course, destroying the enemy. Um, one of the most powerful ways of doing so. But it's also uh, a time to reflect and a time to honor those who um, have, you know, served under the guns or served beside the guns or who have served in conflict around the world uh, in our host nations um, that we can use these weapons platforms to actually uh, create that sense of, of, of honor and of pride and to you know really have that ceremonial situation where it's it's abrupt and loud and and reminds us all that uh, you know there has been those sacrifices and situations that have occurred that require such a prestigious event uh, that's choreographed so clean and neatly like this but of course also the same applies for that positive uh, reinforcement you know it's it's nice to have guns blasting in the background if you've just been turned into the present which you know i'm sure a lot of you are commenting on this video right now talking about potential election results etc not getting involved for very obvious reasons but let's just take a moment to reflect and pause upon uh, these these soldiers here taking their time and and you know volunteering their service in being able to provide the uh, ceremonial service on these guns and it's uh, it's a proud moment i'm sure for any gunner to take part in i'm sure these guys would agree that they enjoy being a part of this kind of situation and this kind of event so um so i hope you enjoyed today's video and learned a little bit about what we do uh, when we actually work alongside the guns in a ceremonial uh stature and i hope uh, those who are aspiring to be part of the artillery look forward into taking your own potential involvement in this in the future and uh, take massive pride in doing so thanks for joining me i'll leave you with the sound of the guns all the best bye bye